Good morning, Heritage. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Welcome to Heritage Church Online. We are glad you're here with us this morning. If you're a guest this morning, we're glad you're on. We had some audio issues last week, but this week we got it all sorted out. You can Yay, hear us. Patrick. Share that with your friends. <laughs> if you have any prayer requests, you have anything like that, just make sure you put it in the comments or you can email us uh, through the website, yourheritagechurch.com. If you need us for anything, just let us know. We know it can be kind of a hard time right now where we're very disconnected from each other. Uh, during this service, this is an interactive service. We're going to ask questions. Make sure you answer those questions. Engage online. We are in week 57 of of. Uh, pandemic protocol, so we're doing different things for worship. We're doing an outdoor worship lawn chair church at 9.30 a.m., weather permitting, and then if you can't seem to make it to that, and that's okay, sometimes you just can't make it, or if you're sick or something like that, stay at home and stream us online at 10.45, which is what you're doing right now. Uh, share this site on Facebook, get on our website, check out what's going on at Heritage Church. We are continuing to watch the numbers, and we're very committed to your safety. We also often get the question, how can we give to support the ministry that's happening at Heritage Church? And there are three ways you can give at Heritage. You can give through our website, you can text 84321, or you can simply drop a check in the mail. And we thank you so much for your financial faithfulness because of you oh, yeah. were able to serve our community. We also want to remind you that each and every month we do a one thing, and a one thing that we uh, do each month highlights one ministry. This month our one thing is our 24-7 little food pantry. We've erected two little small food pantries out at the front of the church, and people can come anytime they want to get supplemental food, and so we're collecting for that this month. If you'd like to help with that, that would be great. And Happens additionally, because uh, we, have, uh, we are committed to serving our community, next Saturday from 8 to 12, you can come yes. in. Anytime within there, we'll be sending a sign-up genius. We'll be over at Heritage Elementary School, help sprucing up the school a little bit. Everybody needs to do a little spring cleaning, right? Yes. So we hope you'll come out there with Michael and I so um, we can show the love of God. Remember during the pandemic when we didn't have anything to do? Well, now we have an opportunity to serve. So Now you got some stuff to do. Let's get at it. Hope let's to see serve. you for Serve Saturday. That's right. We need to serve our community. We're actually called to serve our community. That's what this series is kind of about, really. It's our Hey Neighbor series. Uh, we're talking about the Great Commission. It's what Jesus asked us to do. And he said this in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. He said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And we know it's an imperative in our, in our faith that we share our faith but how do we do that in a way that works? You know, because we've if, if you've ever bothered to try it, you know it's a really, really uncomfortable proposition to share your faith cold with somebody, right? It's it's really and it's uncomfortable for them and it's a little you know, it's cringy. It's very cringy. Let's put it that way. That's a good word for it. And and but so how do we do this, what Jesus asked us to do, in a way that makes sense, in a way that above all actually works. And what we want to share with you today is that the way to start this whole thing is you got to start with prayer. And so that's our question we have for you today. If we're going to start with prayer to share our faith with people, what is prayer to you? Mm. So that's our question for you. You can answer that online in the chat section. What is prayer to you? And it's, that's a big question because people just don't stop. I think we learn by example and we just don't stop to think. What, what is it I'm actually really literally doing right now? That's such a great question. For example, if you had someone in your life who had just became a Christian or was interested in Christianity, and, and they were to ask you, what's this prayer all about? What yeah. would your answer be? What is, well, you know, how would you answer that? What is prayer? What is prayer to you? Yeah, I mean, they teach, I mean, oh my gosh, you could Google it and you're going to get a bunch of five syllable words that tells you, you know, good theological terms that tells you what prayer is. And you can pray this way, or you can pray that way. And there's a dozen different ways to pray and all that. But what is prayer to you? What is prayer to you? That's a great place to start. If we're going to start with prayer, what is prayer to you? It's meant, meant so many things over the years to me. Let's see. Prayer to me. Here's Eva. She's a quick typist. Prayer to me is it? is a kind of my one-way conversation with God. <laughs> my one, mm. She's I'm very honest. Yeah. My one-way conversation with God. Uh, Michael Bryce says, offloading burdens onto God. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, Alyssa says, sharing with God. 
Mm. Okay. Donna says, my way to communicate with God. Okay, good answers, good answers. Anybody else? There's so many things it is. Um, and really, I think sometimes, sometimes we think it's, you know, if we could just say the magic combo of good, flowery, over-spiritualized words that maybe, just maybe, God will hear us and give us what we want, right? Um, I, I think sometimes we, we think that way and we approach it that way because that's what we witness in church. You, know, you get people like us, pros, right? We went to seminary to learn all these flowery words, right? That's, and a, so we that's, stay a, up here. that's, a, that's a big word, pro. Yeah. <laughs> pros, yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's an assumption there. But uh, we, we learn to, you know, say these nice prayers. I mean, we've got books of prayers in seminary and all this stuff. And, and you know, as sometimes we make it so difficult. Like God's sitting up in heaven looking down at us going, Jesus, did you hear that? Did you hear what he's saying? You hear C minus. Saying? Yeah, see, did you hear what he's saying? How could I say no to that, right? <laughs> he asked so nicely. It's like your kid coming to you ask for something. He asked so nice. Good How manners, I, good could, manners. Could I say nothing? Could I, I mean, that's what we think prayer is. And so we want to simplify it in, in the sense of, how do we start to reach our neighbors with the good news, with our faith? How do we share that with them? I want us to think it's like breathing. Prayer is like breathing because you breathe in, you inhale, and then you breathe out. <sighs> Exhale, right? And when you breathe in, you're breathing in the oxygen, the thing that makes you go. And when you breathe out, you breathe out the CO2 and the world gets that and nature gets that and turns it back into oxygen, right? And, and so prayer needs to be like that. It needs to be this rhythm of breathing in. So that's the listening part of prayer. And then breathing out, the talking part of prayer. Because you've got to inhale before you have anything to exhale, Right? You have to listen, or we should listen, before we go to prayer. Prayer is about listening first. Listen to what Jesus says. He says in John 8, 42, he says, Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And that seems a little harsh at first, but when we think about it, have I placed myself under God's control this day? Am I praying to God, going, God, what do you want me to do? What, who do you want me to pray for? Who do you want me to talk to? How do you want me to be to? Have you placed it? You, are you belonging to God today? Because I have this, this thing. When we begin to listen to God, God's going to start to talk to us and give us direction. I think we treat prayer sometimes like it's a to-do list for God. And we forget that it's probably supposed to be a to-do list for us. I mean, we think... We want, we want our prayers to change God's mind about something, but really, shouldn't the prayers change our mind and our hearts? You know, here's, here's the truth we want you to get today, is that God uses prayer to change us and then uses us to change the world. And whenever we want to discuss spiritual things, we always want to use Jesus as our example. And there's no question that if you look at, script, at scriptures, scriptures have something to say to us about Jesus and this concept of prayer. I mean, in scripture, Jesus prayed, he prayed a lot. And, you know, it's kind of interesting for us. We're like, wait a second, Jesus was God. So, you know, well, you know what, 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 what was Jesus doing? What was happening there? And, and there were a couple of things that were happening there. Remember, God came down from heaven. You know, God, God took off his divinity and became human so he could be one of us, so he could feel things and experience things. And so I think when we see Jesus praying in the scriptures, what we're seeing is we're seeing Jesus pray like we might pray. Jesus is setting the example for us. So Jesus had some limitations when he was here. He had some self-imposed ones, mm -hmm. you know, that God, God took off his godhood and put on his personhood. And uh, scripture talks to us about this in the, in the book of Hebrews where scripture says this. For we do not have, when Jesus was praying, Jesus was praying to God, just like we might be praying to God. And it says this about when we pray. And I, and I hope these words resonate with you like they resonate with me. Scripture says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness. Whew. Don't you love that? <laughs> I mean, that God knows, God knows how weak we are when we get ready to pray. Mm -hmm. God knows that we didn't pray all day long. We rush from one thing to the next. We get ready to bread and we throw up a, hey, Jesus, bless me, or maybe a, hey, Jesus, thank you at the end of the day. And God empathizes with our humanity because God knows what it's like to be human. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. 
That scripture is referring to Jesus. Jesus was tempted just like us. You know, he wanted to lay down and not pray either, but yeah. but he but but he did, right? Do I have and, to pray? And, and then it, and then then it tells us how we should approach God when we pray. Listen to this. It says, "Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence." Do you get that? You can have some swag in your prayer, right? <laughs> I mean, you can approach God with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see, we can approach God with confidence, and we will know, know, can know that God's going to give us his mercy. He's going to give us his grace and help us. You see, Jesus was more than that, though. He showed us, you know, he showed us what prayer was like with self-imposed limitations. Jesus even taught us how to pray. I mean, how many of you know the Lord's Prayer? And in, in that prayer, what he's doing is he's telling us the posture we should be in. I mean, we should understand who God is as we pray. And he tells us that. But then in Scripture, we see a couple more examples and over and over again. You remember in Scripture, when you read these words, it'll, it'll say this oftentimes. Jesus withdrew to pray. Mm. Jesus would step away from whatever he was doing. Everybody, you know, kind of wanting to talk to him. Everybody wanted a healing. Everybody wanted a piece of Jesus. And Jesus would, he would step away. He would withdraw to pray. And we see right away when he comes on the scene in Luke 4, and his ministry is about to begin. And remember when he goes out into the wilderness, and he's tempted out there? And, and, and he goes out there, and, and he prays. So he didn't just uh, start his day with prayer. Jesus started his entire ministry with prayer. Mm. And I wonder what our lives would be like if we didn't just look at it as a, you know, as a check mark on our list of things to do on the day, <laughs> as we looked at it as, as a guiding principle uh, in our life. And and Jesus, even in facing those temptations, set a model for us. Because we're going to have to confront the problems going on in our own hearts before we can effectively pray for others. Okay. And that happened in Luke 4. And then in Luke 6, we see Jesus getting ready. He's getting ready to choose his disciples. Who are going to be the followers? Who are going to be the ones who are closest to him? And Jesus stops to pray. He stops to pray before he figures out who he's going to ask to invest um, in his mission on this earth. And I wonder, do we ever spend any time praying about those that God has called us to invest in? Mm. I mean, if we're going to invest in people, if we're going to love God and love our neighbor like God told us that we should, shouldn't we pray? Because you see, with prayer, in prayer, God changes us. And when God changes us, we're able to change our neighbors and we're able to change our world. You know, so here's a question. Why don't we pray? Jesus did it. We know it's in the scriptures. It's all kinds of things. Jesus even taught us how. You know, why don't we pray? That's the question I want you guys to answer right now. Why don't we pray? Well, I kind of already gave my answer. I said sometimes I kind of fall asleep. Well, you just kind of right? fall asleep. This yeah, is like, man, it's like, been a rough day, guys. Dear Lord, See ya. thank you for peace. Yeah, yeah, you don't any, even finish anybody? the prayer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Sometimes yeah. That Why happens. don't we pray? Yeah. Think about the times when you've been just real dry in your prayers. Why didn't you pray? Answer that on the um, on the Facebook Live if you don't mind. Um, we're glad you're here. So like interact on that and let's let's share with each other. Let's crowdsource this thing, right? Why don't we pray? I know there's all kinds of reasons why I end up not praying. I'll share some in a minute, but I want to hear what you guys just give them just have to say. a second. I know it takes I'm waiting a second to get to type. lag here. Teresa Miller says, good morning, beautiful pastors and everyone. Thank you. <laughs> You're sweet. She's a charmer. Yes. Um, James Perdue says, do not feel qualified. Oh. Put a good answer. <laughs> I am not qualified. I mean, in, and I think we skip right past that approaching the throne of grace with confidence, right? Yeah, but yeah. I think saying that yeah. makes you qualified. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James, it's, it could be a, it's a possibility, definitely. Mm -hmm. Do not feel qualified. That's such a good answer. Mm -hmm. Nikki McDaniel says, because we are not getting the answers we want. Mm. Oh, that's so good, Nikki. Donna says, uh, oh, Donna says, I can relate to that, Suzanne. Mm -hmm. Eva says, it doesn't come naturally to me. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. It's not, a, yeah, that's that's a good answer. Maybe it's just something I don't, I don't do, you know? It doesn't come naturally to me. There are so many reasons I think why well, we don't pray, but there's there's a few that I think like everybody kind of comes across, and and I'm just as guilty. The first one is you just don't know how. I mean, like I don't I don't know what the magic combo words is. I, I don't know anything about this. I don't know how to pray. It looks like the pros do it, and and maybe they should do it. And I'll ask them to pray for me, you know. And and we forget that it's just simply a conversation. 
But like any good conversation, you should listen and ask questions first and then talk. Mm. So it's a conversation. It is totally a conversation. Uh, Barb Bailey says, sometimes we just don't feel worthy of praying. Ooh, mm. the worth thing. Teresa says, I think some just don't know how to sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And Well, so we don't know how. But keep it a conversation. But listen and ask questions first. And then we're just too busy. Sometimes we're just so busy. We're going 90 to nothing. We're getting the kids ready. We're trying to feed them, get them to school, get us to work, do all the things that we're supposed to be doing in a day that the world says we need to be doing. But here's the thing. If you're that busy that you can't pray, maybe you need prayer more than anybody else. Or maybe you're too busy. Or maybe you're just too busy. Maybe, just maybe, if we ask God, what should I be doing today? Who should I be with today? Who should I talk to today? Who should I invest my life in today? Maybe if we started our prayers like that, then maybe the business would begin to go away. Because God doesn't tie burdens on our back that, that we can't bear by ourselves. He, and in fact, God will come alongside you and give you the power and the grace to bear those things. So maybe if you're too busy, you're just, you, you need it more than anybody else. And then finally, finally, uh, Teresa Miller says, and sometimes I think at times they know God knows already what's in their hearts, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. I like that, Teresa. Very scriptural. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think, though, beyond even just God knowing already, is that we just doubt it works. Really? I mean, we, we doubt that, that, you know, we prayed for things that we wanted. We pray, and it meant a whole lot to us, and, and God said, just didn't answer. God, it was like our prayers bounced off the ceiling, and it just didn't work, and so we gave up on it, right? What would you give in your life to see God actually do a miracle, Val? What would you give to experience God do something in the life of another person? What would you give to say, see God do a miracle through you? You know, when we pray sometimes, I think part of the, where we go wrong in this is that we begin to ask for things that we want. We begin to ask for stuff that we want, and we forget to ask for directions first. The things, usually the stuff we want when we ask for that, well, and, and James, Jesus' brother, says this. He says, when you ask, you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives. You know, we're given we're given directions to God instead of receiving <laughs> directions from God. We're not asking what God wants in this. And, and I'm not saying that God never answers just this random prayer. It's selfish, and I want this. God, please help me out. I'm not saying God doesn't do it. Like any good parent, sometimes you give in, and you, you give the kid what they want if it doesn't hurt them, right? Even the scraps. But I, I'm saying that maybe, just maybe, we need to check our motives. Is this about me, or is this about what God wants? Because when we ask directions, it's about what God wants. You know, look at Jesus. When he picked his disciples, they were not obvious choices, right? I mean, these were, these were considered the lower rungs of society. These were outsiders. These are criminals even. These were terrorists, even political terrorists to some people, right? These were the people that nobody would have chosen. These weren't a bunch of highly trained spiritual authorities or anything like that. And if I had to pick those people... If I had to pick people, like, who am I going to invest my life in for the next three years before I'm going to hang on a cross and die for everybody? Who am I going to do that? Who am I going to pour myself into? I would have picked people I liked, right? If it had been about me, if I got my choice, right? I would have picked people I respected, high performers, you know, people I know. If I'm going to invest in you, it's going to pay off dividends, right? And Jesus didn't pick those people at all because God uses the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God uses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. Because God is a, is a pro at taking people that aren't worthy, me, and using them, and using them. And so God's answer to your prayers, it, it isn't always what you think it's going to be, but we forget to ask in the first place. You know, there are good reason to pray, because when we pray and we begin to ask God, who should I invest my life in? Who should I be praying for? What should I be doing today? We are involving ourselves in the direct work of God. And we begin to do the thing that Jesus asked us to do, to love our neighbor, because love begins with prayer, because it is not, it is absolutely not a feeling you have, it is an intention you have. You're tuning your heart and your mind into their needs, and that prayer begins to change us, and then God can use us to begin to change the world. 
Well, there are a lot of reasons of, of why, why we don't pray, and really they have to do more with us than they have to do with God. But Jesus modeled for us the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to pray for our neighbors, and maybe we should spend a little time thinking about how do we do that? How do we pray for our neighbors? So we kind of thought through, and you know how pastors are. We have a bunch of P's that uh, might help <laughs> you to think it. The first thing, if we're going to pray for our neighbors, we kind of, we have to plan to pray for our neighbors. We have to be intentional about it. The book of Proverbs, which is a great book for you to read, it's full of instructions for how to live your life and how to, how to live out your faith. And it has this great verse where it says this, commit to the Lord whatever you do, whatever it is, even your prayer life, and he will establish your plans. Another translation says this. It says, commit, uh, to commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. So if you decide that you're going to work on prayer, you're going to work on praying for your neighbors more, you, you've got to be intentional about it. You have to plan. I don't know about you, but a lot of mornings you just get up, you're kind of rushing around, you're getting ready and all those kind of things. And we don't even plan. We, we barely plan our day. So if we're going to pray for our neighbors, we're going to have to get intentional about it. And as a church, we want to be intentional yeah. about that. But the church isn't, isn't just pastors being intentional. It's all of us being intentional because you have areas of influence that we'll never have. So how could we be intentional about praying for our neighbors? I don't know your friends. And then, and then we have to prepare. We, ha we have to prepare. You know, we have to prepare our hearts. We have to open our eyes to the people right in front of us. We have to open our ears to the things that we hear around us. We have to open our hearts. How many times have you been getting ready in the morning or been doing something at your desk and a person just comes to your mind? And you're like, well, I haven't thought about that person forever. I often think that's not an accident. I believe that's God prompting you to think about that person. And, and how could you pray for that person in the moment? What about the people that you see as you're, as you're going around your day? You know, uh, we, people irritate us, right? I mean, people kind of get on our nerves. And a lot of times we just don't open our eyes to what's going on. We've all seen the memes where it talks about, you know, that person who cut you off in traffic. They're dealing with a sick child. Maybe they've had chemo, whatever. And sometimes we are just not, we are failed to be empathetic and compassionate like Jesus would be. So, you know, sometimes we just need to open our eyes. We need to be open our ears. Mm. I mean, do you have anybody at work that just gets on your nerves? I mean, do you have anybody in your life that every time you open their mouth, you just, they open their mouth, you wish that they would be quiet? But have you really listened to what they're saying? Maybe that constant negativity coming out of them. Um, maybe the complaining that come up. Maybe there's, a, maybe there's a place where they're wounded. Could we open our eyes? Could we open our ears? And could we open our heart the way Jesus did? You know, when Jesus saw all the people around him, all the neighbors, Scripture tells us this about Jesus. He was moved with compassion. <laughs> and I wonder, you know, how compassionate are we with our neighbors and the people we meet? And understand when we say neighbors, I know that we immediately think, you know, the people who raise their garage doors right about you. We're talking about anybody you meet is a neighbor that you have an opportunity to influence you have an opportunity to share God's love with them just in the way you approach them. Mm -hmm. So are, are we pre prepared for that? And are we prepared for how uncomfortable we are with sharing our faith or even saying any, anything about Jesus? I mean, we've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable sometimes. And we've got to, you know, think about that and prepare. God, you can pray, you know, God, give me the courage when I have the opportunity. Give me the courage to say what you mean to me, God. Mm -hmm. That would be part of being prepared. And then we have to think about all the places that we go. I mean, how many of us do we think about all the places that we'll go today? Most of us don't even think about that. I mean, we're around people all the time, whether we like it now. In the pandemic, not so much. We were around our families a whole lot, weren't we? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I was around you a lot. <laughs> yes, we were around our, you know. Still we, with me. But we're around people. In your neighborhood, you're around people. When you go to work, you're around people. When, you know, when you drop kids off in the car line or when your kids are at school, you have meetings. You have, when you walk into a store, you're around people. When you go to the ball field, you're around people. We're around people people a lot a lot and so as we're as we're around people do we think about how you know the people we're around physically the people we're around relationally do do we think about all the places we're going to go and think about it all the opportunities that god puts before us to love our neighbor each and every day and then we really have to focus and think about the people you know, I know sometimes there can be somebody who, you know, is just, you know, at the store and you're kind of looking at them and thinking, you know, what is the deal with this person? But what if we could stop judging people and what if we could start loving people enough? 
to pray for them. Hmm. Have you ever thought that there are some people that you see that might be different than you or somebody you normally wouldn't pray for? Or, you know, your heart's not open because we haven't prepared our heart. Have you ever thought that, that when you just randomly pray for somebody, you might be the only person who's prayed for that person in a month or a year and certainly that day? What a holy privilege it is to be given those opportunities when we encounter people to pray for them. You see somebody walking down the street by themselves in downtown Huntsville. You have no idea knowing what their story is. Could, could we just stop and have a heart like Jesus had and pray for them? And then we kind of have a little exercise for you we'd love for you to do. We'd love for you to draw a circle and put your name in the middle mm -hmm. of it. And when you draw that circle, just put some spokes off of that circle all the way around it. You can put six to eight and put some names of people that you are in close proximity to, people that you know relationally, people that you bump into, and just commit that you're going to pray for them. All these are great ways that we can pray for our neighbor. We can be intentional about it. We can prepare our hearts. We can think about the places we go, and we could begin to look at people the way Jesus looked at them, to try to love them the way that Jesus does. You see, God uses prayer to change us, and then God turns around and uses us to change our neighbor's world. It's kind of backwards what we think it is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, we think 100%. we're changing God somehow, and, and God actually wants to change us with it. So here's our next steps. This is what we want you guys to start doing. It's what the whole church needs to start doing. Us, us too. I mean, we're all doing this. We're doing this as a church because we want to get this right. We need to complete a who is my neighbor map, like, like Pastor Suzanne said. We're going to draw a circle, draw six to eight spokes off of it. Who's somebody I run across all the time that either physically, physically we're near each other or relationally we're near each other a lot because of what we do together? So someone that we're around a lot, begin to write those names down. Pray about it. Ask God to kind of bring their faces to your mind and, and start to do that and begin to pray for those people, but always asking God, who should I be praying for today? What should I be praying for today, God? Listen first, then pray. And then the next next step is I will begin to pray for each of my neighbors by name every day. Every day. These are the people I'm going to come across every day, and I want to begin praying for them. Like Pastor Suzanne said, some people never have anybody pray for them. That's so sad. It's sad. I want you guys to pray for us, mm -hmm. for sure. And then the the final next step is, is maybe you... You're just new to all this. Maybe you've come in contact or had an experience with God, maybe through another person, maybe just with God, God's self. God's contacted you. And, and you don't know about everything. You don't know how to pray. You don't know how to do anything. But you're starting to learn about Jesus, and you want to place your trust in Christ. We never want to leave a service without offering you that. This chance to say, yes, I want to place my trust in Jesus, that Jesus is going to show me the way, the truth, in the life and going to save me in that. And so if you'd like to do that, please contact us. We'd love to talk to you about what it really means for you, how it will revolutionize your life and begin to change the way you do things. And if you'd like to celebrate it, we do it through an act called baptism. And it's where we immerse ourselves in the water or have water poured over us as a symbol of this cleansing, this new birth, this new creation that I'm becoming. And so we'd like to celebrate that with you. If you haven't been baptized yet, we'd love to share that with you. And this morning, I'd love to pray for you as we get ready, mm -hmm. as we get ready to close. I want to remind you that each and every week we have Lawn Chair Church in person, weather dependent, at 9.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. We have our worship online. You can like Heritage Kids on Facebook. If you have any prayer requests, put them in the chat. And if you're ready to take your next step as a follower of Jesus Christ, let us know. We want to help you to take your next step. If you need anything, let us know. I'll pray, and then our uh, band will have some worship music for you as we close out our time together this morning. Let us pray. God, we love you, and God, we thank you that we can approach you with confidence. God, I pray that when we approach you, we experience your mercy and your grace. And God, forgive us for the times when we've made prayer all about us, when, God, you want us to make prayer about others as well. Teach us how to pray for our neighbors. Let us be mindful that praying for our neighbors isn't something that we have to do. It's something that we get to do. What a holy privilege it is to pray for those who are in need of your love, of your mercy, your compassion, your forgiveness. God, I pray that you would set our hearts on fire, that our hearts would break for those who are lonely, 
for those who hurt, for those who are in pain. God, I pray that we would be people who never forget that you have called us to love you, God, but you've also called us to love our neighbors. Help us to be faithful to do so. God, I pray for any prayer needs anyone has on this call. And God, I thank you that we can always turn to you, confidently knowing that you are our Father. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all enjoy the music. See you next week. Love you. See you next week. Bye-bye.